Today I'm going to show you how I created the background of this ATC. This is a simple technique that is very effective in making an interesting background using saran wrap or plastic wrap. Here I'm showing you an ATC that is made from a recycled container, a box that I got stencils in. I've applied a layer of gesso to it and I'm putting the ink tense blocks on this. I'm using fall colors and I'm going to use this with two other mediums. The question asked is, can I use the same technique with different mediums and get the same or a similar effect? So I thought I'd put this to the test. So I'm just applying my color, a good coat of color onto the ATC. I'm going to spray it with water. Gently activate it. I don't want the colors to totally blend. I want to see some of that difference in there. Then I will apply a sheet of plastic wrap, crumpling it up. I want to get those crumples in the paint. So you put it on when it's wet and scrunch it up so that you get some of those interesting marks. Then it needs to dry. So that was my ink tense blocks. So I thought, okay, let's try this with my gelatos. Another gessoed card, and I'm going to use my Faber-Castell gel sticks. They're very similar slash identical to the gelatos, but you can only get the basic colors that you see here. The gelatos are rather expensive, and you don't get the color range. But I have these, so I thought I would use them. Again, I'm reaching out for a couple shades of yellow, a couple shades of orange, a couple shades of red, whatever I have in my gelato base or my gel stick basic set. So I'm applying it very similarly to how I applied the intense ink tense blocks, just getting it good coverage all over. Where the ink tense blocks are dry, the gelatos are creamy or waxy. So again, I'm activating it with a spritz of water, mixing it up. I have to work a little harder to get these totally activated. I find, it, depending on the layer that you put I've cut to get a good, good layer of color, you might need to work a little bit more so you don't end up with that residue, the waxy residue. And again, I'm just applying a sheet of plastic wrap, dollar store plastic wrap to it, kind of scrunching it up so I get some interesting effects. Now, most of us have our basic craft paint acrylics. I have ceram coat from years and years ago when I used to do folk art. And I also have some Martha Stewart pearl paint and metallics. So I'm just going to use a little bit of both to get a similar color range. So there's some Martha Stewart metallics, a little bit of spritz of water. You, I found you need to thin this down a little bit. Some yellow. some brown. Yeah, the water made it move a little bit. And I'm going to put on some bronze as well. And I realized shortly that I didn't put some red on, so I'm grabbing the red ceram coat and I'm just going to add some red to my picture just so it uses the same color tones. Piece of, piece of plastic wrap, crumpling it up, and setting the ATC to dry. Now I'm going to off camera here, and I'm going to let these dry. So again, we've done the same technique using three different paint mediums, ink tense blocks, gelatos, or gel sticks, and Delta Ceram Coat.
So now we're at the reveal. Now it has been about 10, 15 minutes and I'm ready with this heat gun just in case it's a little wet because I don't want the wetness or the paint to run. I want to see those crinkles and the, the detail that the, um, this technique gives us. So there's the ink tense block. And you've got some lovely colors and some texture and it just looks beautiful. This was the gelatos. It stayed a little bit better. But again, you can see you have the texture of the plastic wrap in there and the mixture of colors. And it's looking very lovely. So comparing the two, they look very similar. The Inktense block is a little bit more um, matte than the gelatos or gel sticks. Just giving them a good dry. The water had soaked through the cardboard of the card, so they're still very moist underneath. But I don't think if anybody looked at these from here, you wouldn't be able to tell or identify which is which. Just giving it a good, a good dry. So ink tense gelato. Now this is the Ceramco acrylic and the Martha Stewart paint, kind of a mixture. It does stick to the plastic a little bit more and it lifted up more of the pigment and the paint lifted up with plastic wrap. So you see a lot more of the background underneath, but you still get the sense of the texture and the, the from the plastic wrap. I'm going to try to use the plastic wrap and just apply a little bit more color using it to still get that <clears throat> texture, excuse me, and give it a good dry. So the technique works with all three of these paint mediums. Now uh, my intention was to stamp on paper onto deli paper and then apply it to the ATC. But I realized that the Srem uh, Code acrylics would not reactivate, but the gelatos do. So when you apply the Mod Podge to put on the deli paper, you lose the wonderful crinkled effect of the plastic wrap. Ink tense blocks, not as quickly. You have to get pretty rough with it to disturb that. So I decided to print right on to the ATCs with some of my fall stamps. These are all new stamps that I've picked up at the dollar store. This one's from the dollar store. It's a collection of flowers, sunflower. And this is from a Michael's seasonal bin. I did find that putting the um, Ranger pigment ink, permanent ink, onto the cards, the Gelatos didn't quite cover as well. Now I'm not sure if that had to do with the stamper or the background. But you can see it missed a lot of the detail on the owl and a little bit on the fence there. So the Delta Serem Coat Martha Stewart mix. Another stamp that I got in Michael's 
bin. I love the font and I love the, the sentiment here. I'm just drying the pigment ink a little bit. It takes it seemed to take a little bit to dry and I just wanted to set it. It is permanent when it's dry. I just didn't want to smudge it because I'm quite I'm well known. So I'm taking this leaf print and just putting it randomly on the card. I love when it's not full on bits and pieces. It brings, builds more interest and texture. So a quick dry. You do pick up the metallic on this card, but that was because it was used in the medium paint medium that I used. I'm just going to use some distressed ink around the edges. Just to make a border around the card and set off the card. And I apologize that I'm out of frame right here. I try, I focus because I want you to be able to see things close up and then I sometimes forget about that when I get into the creating. Now here you see me using a couple different of my gel pens on the card, the gelato card, and it did not work. I could not get decent coverage um, with any of my gel pans or any of my black pans. I tried several both on and off camera and I couldn't get it. The gelato surface I find does leave some kind of waxy residue. This is the ink tense block surface and I go over this and there is no problem. Same pan that I used with the other one and couldn't get going. Just adding a little bit of detail, a little more depth of color, filling in where the stamp wasn't quite, quite doing the job. I was contemplating painting the green leaves and um, I left it just as it was. Using the pigment ink, a little bit of black, and it just suddenly makes it pop a little bit more. You can tell the difference from just the brown to the brown with the black. So just a little more adding, making it a little bit darker so it stands out just a little bit more with my dollar store gel pen. You didn't need to do that there. I'm trying to color in the fence and I can't do it. In the end, I think I went back and I used actual acrylic paint and filled it in. Applying the sentiments using an acrylic block. This one, I should have used my own stamps and spelled out the sentiment instead of using a prefabbed one. It's a little too small, I think, for, for this ATC. Live and learn. I decide that I'm going to add a little bit of gold to the center of the sunflowers. So I'm just rubbing it, pouncing in the centers, just to get a little bit more interest on that card. I'm going to edge this ATC and all the rest with the gold or the bronze, I think it's the bronze actually, um, Martha Stewart paint. So yes, we've covered the edges with brown, black, and now a little bit of gold. It's the little details sometimes that, that really make the card pop. And I just always have to have that little bit of bling.
Now, if you didn't have stamps, you could use pictures from magazines. You could print your own caption in or phrase in. I covered up the lettering and I'm thinning out my, some black paint, acrylic paint, and I'm splattering. Here I used a tinier brush and the dots that I get are very, very fine. So I switched to a bigger brush here shortly and I get much nicer dots, more the effect. So I splatter with the black acrylic paint and then I go back and I splatter with a little bit with the bronze Martha Stewart acrylic paint as well. Covering it up using what I have on hand. So there we have the three. Now I'm going back and I'm saying, oh, I'm not done. I'm done, but I'm not the three. So you see that using the different mediums, you can achieve a very similar effect, almost identical effect, making, doing your art journaling. So use what you have. You could also use some sprays and try that. You could use your liquid acrylic, liquid X acrylics if you have that. You can use watercolor pencils. All will work. The trick is use the technique with what you have before you go and buy something new. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to my channel. I have many more tutorials.